Welcome back to Grassroots Football, the South Australian Amateur Footy Show, brought to us by West End. Time to get down to Division 5, 6 and 7. Special guest, Footy Chick, Lisa Wright joins us. Lisa, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be back. I'm really, really excited. Yes, we're excited to have you here, no doubt about it. Let's have a look at it. North Haven, up against Brahma Lodge at Largs North Reserve. Macca, what do you think? Well, uh, I live down at North Haven and it's a beautiful place down there and they've got uh, a lovely oval, lovely lights um, and I wish they'd stop turning them on all the time because the power's <laughs> making my lights dim at my house. You sure but it's the lights? I think so. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I think uh, North Haven, uh, yeah, they'll be uh, looking for a big win after last week. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they uh, were fairly, or not fairly, unlucky uh, last week. Um, they'll be reeling. Look, players like Lee Forrest and Trent Colbick worked so hard for that team, so they'll be ready and, and raring to go. Brahma Lodge, on the other hand, um, got their first win on the board. Uh, we prob they probably would have expected to be 2-2 two and two by now. The, they'll have about four or five changes to their side this week, um, including forward Ryan McKee. Um, who's having a bit of sensitive man surgery? Uh, and good What's luck to you. Sensitive man surgery. Uh, bit of snip snip. Right. Okay. Yep. Hi Ryan, if you're watching. <laughs> yeah, from I'm, your, sure uh, I'm sure he's glad that everybody from your knows that. <laughs> um, but look, just because uh, Ryan McKee won't be there, they'll still have the great Scotty McIntyre, and he just belted a lady a lazy eight goals last week. So, um, and he's a machine. Ooh. He is an absolute machine. So, um, you know, given that, look, they're both fairly sort of big-bodied sides, but I'd expect Bramall Lodge to uh, to win this one. All right, Adelaide Lutheran up against Woodville South, Bomber Clifford. Well, yeah, Bomber uh, makes a return to Woody South after Good coaching uh, what Greenacres and Kilburn, and he's been around the traps a bit. The old fella, um, well, a very funny man, Bomber. I uh, well, he's finally decided to go uh, and coach his son Adam, who's uh, who's the captain out at Woody South. Um, and from what I remember him, he used to have sort of you know surfy sort of blonde hair. Anyway, um, look, uh, Adelaide Lutheran uh, as well as Hope Valley, unfortunately the only sides without wins this year. Lutheran so close last week, um, probably kept up with Brown for most of the game, um, but unfortunately just sort of went missing in patches towards, you know, that time on stage um, and let Brahma sort of kick in a few quick goals. So that was um, that was really hurtful to them. Um, Woody South, uh, what can you say? They've sort of been a bit of a surprise um, and they've had good wins um, over good clubs, like uh, Div 5 clubs that were in finals last year. So um, they're actually the ones to watch at the moment. Um, as I said, I, I mentioned the captain, um, who is the coach's son, and also Michael McNeil, who is just um, kicking goals, bags and bags of goals. So I dare say he'll be um, he'll be in the running for the for the, the goal kickers medal. Do uh, Lisa, do they ever have any reports um, of dogs and their owners walking across the ground out in the South Park lands there when they play games? Probably not. Probably not. No. Probably no. Well, I'm really not sure about. I'll have to ask Mick Emmett. Who, uh, who was of course one of the founders of this show and um, I'll, I'll ask him on uh, uh, next Saturday when we actually play them. But look, um, given that, look, Woodville South will probably just be a little bit too strong for Luthies. Yep, Bomber Clifford taking all the credit down there for the way Woodville South have turned it around this year. Don't worry about that. It's Salisbury Downs Oval. We've got Lockleys up against Salisbury West. How do you see this one, Matt? Uh, look, uh, Salisbury West have, um, you know, we're up in uh, Div Divi 3 a little while ago and they've uh, slowly just drifted down. Um, which is a bit sad because they've got a, a great footy club and a great footy club culture, which, you know, uh, they need to get up and running. They've got a lot of juniors and they need to make sure that they keep, you know, pushing on in the right manner. And uh, let's hope Salisbury West keep... Uh keep on kicking on. Absolutely. Salisbury West just uh, for a matter of information actually I think in round one played 14 teenagers. So you can see they're, they're blooding those yeah. kids and it's actually worked well, quite well for them as well. Just with that little bit of experience too um, with players like uh, Ricky Woodrow um, coming back to the side as well. But look um, they finished their game I think they kicked um, three goals in the last half last week compared to um, I think it was 13 goals. Um, so yeah, they, they sort of died off. They had very few options left on the bench. So um, hopefully those injuries aren't bad enough where those uh, kids can come back and play again this week. Um, but look, let's not use an excuse. It will depend on, on their injuries. Um, expect an injection of youth from both sides this week. Uh, but I still think at home, Salisbury West, uh, it's probably a bit of a, uh, can be a bit of an intimidating place to go at times. So I don't think they'll lose too many there this year. All right, you need to do a bit more research, Lisa. That's what I think. Uh, West Croydon up against 
Ed's Plimpton at Fork Reserve. Fork Reserve. Fork <coughs> Reserve. Can yes. you say that? You'd, you have to be. Uh, West Croydon, uh, and that'd be like travelling to Salisbury West as well. I think it'd be a pretty tough game um, playing out there, and uh, Plimpton will be uh, up against it. Yeah, Plimpton, uh, as I said, just lost in the dying minutes of the game uh, last week to Woody South, which uh, they are not very happy about at all. So um, they look, they've got a lot of quick runners, so they'll probably like the wide expanses of, uh, of Hanson Road. Um, but, uh, you know, once again, West Croydon, you wouldn't have picked them to be top coming up from being the Div, uh, Div 6 Premiers of 2010. Um, they, yes, they are sitting on top at the moment with percentage. Um, however, the you know they, they played uh, Lockleys in a grand final replay in round one and beat them convincingly. And, uh, and apparently they beat us last week um, as well. Mm. So uh, I, for mine, probably don't feel that they've been really tested yet. This week will be their real, real first test. So if they can actually beat Plimpton, um, I would probably rate them as definitely being around at the pointy end of the season. Um, however, look, uh, players like uh, like Heath Deer, um, Jimmy Smith, uh, are really going to have to step up this week. I still like Clinton. All right, Rosewater up against Hope Valley at Eric Sutton Oval. Uh, look, I've got to go with the heart here. Look, the Valleys, um, it'd be great to see the Demons. She, she uh, just love Hope Valley, don't you? Get up. Oh, look, you know, I've uh, got we'll, some fond memories from yep. there and uh, spent you know, a lot of years with me junior life up there so we know a lot of people up there and I hope the, the, the valley uh, rolls on this year. Well one thing we do agree on Macca is that we both love the valley, it's a, it's a great place. Unfortunately we probably haven't had the start of the season that we've wanted uh, costly turnarounds, probably not enough commitment to the ball etc um, which has resulted in us uh, sitting almost I think on the bottom at the moment, nil and two. Um, up against Rosewater who opened their account last week so they'll actually be full of confidence um, special mention to Sean Jacobson who actually played his 150 game um, for Rosewater last week and uh, he kicked a goal apparently in the closing minutes of the game from just on 50 and after he had all the beers after the game he'd uh, sort of taken that out to kicking it from the centre square. Um, <laughs> given that look no one barely ever wins at Rosewater. I can't recall us winning at Rosewater in the last three or four <coughs> years but I'm still not going to pick a winner. <laughs> all right Division 6 Colonel Light Gardens play Henley at Mortlock Park. Oh, look, you know, uh, this will test uh, the depth of the Henley footy, footy Club because, you know, having a team playing in Divi 6 is a, 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 you know, a tough gig. Um, but, uh, you know, Colonel Light, home ground advantage. I think home ground advantage is very important in uh, amateur footy. Yeah, absolutely. They, uh, speaking, I, I work with a guy that actually... Uh, um, plays for Colonel Light Garden, sorry I was just say, and that's the Ruckman, Jackie Grover, um, who does a sensational job out there. Um, you know, he's really confident, so uh, I'm, I'm going to pick them as well. All right, Houghton District's up against Clonunga at Thebby. The old scrubbers, Houghton Districts, um, you know, uh, the green and blacks they used to be, and I think they've changed the colour of their jumper uh, against Clonunga. Look, uh, the districts of uh, got a few people, fellas up there, um, the Penn boys, and uh, let's hope that they have a have, have a big day out. Yeah, um, Houghton, who are the Raiders, and they're brown and yellow. They've and, changed. Uh, <laughs> they have changed. Yeah, well, when the they was Dolunga, uh, probably. Yeah. Um, the scrubbers. Look, all, all set for a big year. Um, they've uh, they've been in good form, I believe. They've opened their account as well. Um, Glenunga at the beginning of the year were tipped to be the um, well. They actually came up to Div Six um, after the whole uh, Smithfield pulling out of Div Five thing. Um, they recruited uh, a lot of players um, and that's uh, thanks to coach Chatty Burke who of course um, was a leading division leading goal kicker out at Fitzroy going back a couple of years ago and uh, actually no they were in district last year I think I can't think now um, but uh, look the, the, some of the talent they've recruited Bus, Carvelis um, you know they had a shock loss last week but I think they'll pick it up this week. All right Engel Farm against Adelaide Uni at Rowe Park. The farm is coached by uh, David Payne um, so uh, Payne have played, mm. played many games with David and uh, he's doing a terrific job at Ingle Farm along with uh, Martin Pike's mother who runs runs most of the Ingle Farm footy club out there, mm. been there for years Chris and uh, Pike, yep. a great stalwart of the footy club and I would love to see the farmers uh, get over the uni. Uh, yeah, look, they've 
after going down a couple of uh, obviously a couple of divisions, um, they've decided. Sorry, they've decided to stay up in Div Six this year. I should say um, after taking that option. Look, they've worked hard, but uh, I think the the uni boys and I'm not quite sure what they call their Div Six team. I don't know whether it's the Chardonnay Socialists or the what is it Scumbags or whatever they call themselves. Um, I think. <laughs> I think I'll, 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 uh, I can't think what they call themselves, but uh, I'll I'll have to ask uh, ask John. Um, but uh, look, I think they'll be uh, too good for Ingle Farm. All right, Kenilworth, Central United, St Mary's. Bit of a traveller for the Central United boys, um, which might be the difference, I think. Lisa. Kenilworth, as I said, uh, probably along with Blackfriars, are probably looking, um, along with uh, Glenunga, are probably looking like the top three or early on setting up the top three. So um, I'm going to go for Kenilworth on that All one. All right, well, based on that, Blackfriars against Trinity should be a pretty good game down there at Trinity. Well, Trinity shouldn't turn up, apparently, because yeah. uh, Blackfriars are already going to be on the top three. No, 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 don't, don't get me wrong. Look, Trinity are a very good Div 6 side, and they um, they were unlucky to sort of make grand finals going the, even the last couple of years. Um, I was speaking to uh, Black's coach, Dean Anderson, today, who happens to be Hope Valley's old B-grade coach, and um, he said to me that he actually sees this week's game as a challenge for his team, um, that he rates Trinity as one of the pace setters of this division as well. So he said he had a young team. He's trying to install some disciplines and game style to their playing group. Um, Blacks have shown after the last couple of weeks that they can play an exciting brand of football and they just need to be more consistent and stick to their game, game plan and, and he's hoping that it will eventually uh, fall into place for them. So he said Trinity are a more seasoned team of players but uh, look, given that it's a hard one, it's going to be very close. I might actually just go for Trinity on this mm. one. All right, don't talk to any more coaches. You have to give me quick answers now for Div 7 because <laughs> you've only got a couple of minutes left. Divi 7, Modbury up against Tea Tree Gully, Modbury Sports Reserve. Anyone that knows the rivalry here knows that this will be a ding dong. Um, and it will be a big game. Modbury or Tea Tree Gully? Uh, they, will, they will build each other senseless, I think. OK. Absolutely. No, I think I might go for Tea Tree Gully on this one. All right, Tea Tree Gully. Athelston, they've got the bye, so they've I got a they're win. A good chance. They're yeah. a good chance. North Pines versus Sacred Heart at Andrew Smith Reserve. Uh, I don't know whether Sacred Heart would like to uh, this traveller out to North Pines, and I think the North Pines boys will get over them. Oh, I don't know, because uh, Shocker's sitting pretty on the top of this uh, ladder almost at the moment, so they've smashed both Athelston and Mobry um, in this division, so um, obviously they're going to venture out to North Pines. Look, this could end up being a shootout between uh, Cameron Carroll, the great Cameron Carroll, uh, who was the first to kick 100 goals in the league last year, um, and uh, Todd McCarrath from North Pines, so um, I reckon whoever wins that shootout might win the game, and I think that might be uh, the Shockers. All right, the two that close it out, Flinders Uni up against Angle Vale, Mitchell Park up against Mawson Lakes. It's time for us to go, unfortunately, next week. Daryl Winter's going to join us on the show, so we'll see what big Daryl's got to say. And, of course, Lisa, you're out at Mawson Lakes, so indeed. it'll be exciting. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Look forward to your company again next week on Grassroots Footy.